good? First time in Santa Cruz and uh, it's been a trip. It's a pretty interesting place here. Um, I just want to share some with you guys quickly. <laughs> death is an awful thing, but death by torture is much more brutal and uh, awful to think about. And there was a man who was, who was beaten beyond recognition and was forced to, to drag a cross uh, to which he'd be nailed upon, and his name is Jesus. And as he's, as he's walking to this hill, dragging this cross that he would soon be nailed upon, these women that he sees in the distance are weeping. They're weeping because they knew an innocent man was being put to death. And they were weeping because this man who had only sought to do good unto mankind was being treated so harshly. And it's crazy, you would think that, that Jesus would see their pity and be comforted by it, but he turned to them and he said something very interesting. He said, ladies, women, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves. For a day is coming that you will wish that your children or yourselves had not been born. There is a day coming that you will cry out for the mountains and hills to fall upon you and crush you and hide you. And that will not happen. Why in the world would this man who's being, who has been brutally beaten, beaten within an inch of his, of his own life, who's stripped naked, shamed in front of people, turns to these people, these, two, these women, and says, don't weep for me. Friends, when we're in pain, we, under, we, we see our pain as being the most excruciating, most terrible thing that we can experience in that moment. But Jesus in that moment stopped and considered these women and said, what you, will, what you will face one day, what all creation will face is much more terrible than what I'm facing. What could be worse than being brutally beaten, tormented, and shamed in front of a mob? And what he's saying is this. He says, don't weep for me. Because my friends, he's saying, weep because we have sinned. Weep because you will not be able to conquer the grave. None of us have ever been able to beat death, have we? No one in this world has ever beaten death, not died. He says, weep not for me because you will not be able to beat the grave. Weep not for me because one day you will have to stand before God and be judged according to your sins. He says, do not weep for me because you will be defeated by your sin. You will be defeated by death. And you'll have to stand before God and give an account for your sin in your life. And my friends, I would ask you today to consider the reality of this, is that one day you will have to stand before the God of this universe. Jesus was there for us. Yes, my friend. He stood up there for us. I hear you, brother. Why don't you let me finish? He died for my sin. I'm I glad. I have to stand up before God because he stood up for me. Thanks, big guy. Yes, that is true. And I pray that that's true for you. But what about the rest of the people in this room? What about the rest of you? Have you considered the weight of the fact that death will come for you? And with death, you will face the God who has made you. You will face the God who has made you and has made laws and says, do not break them. But we've all broken every single one of them. And what Jesus is saying is there is a far greater torment that faces all of us than just some torture in this life. There is an eternity that faces us. But yet, my friends, as my buddy who so loudly spoke, there is a remedy. What Christ was going to do that very day, he was doing for the very people like you and I. People like you and I who should weep over the fact that we have much sin but can do nothing about it. Who will face death and won't be able to escape it. And we'll have to stand before God and have nothing to give account for besides our own sins, which he should just punish us. But yet this man, Jesus Christ, was going to the cross. These women didn't realize why Jesus was going to the cross. He wasn't captured by some Romans and some Jews and nailed to a cross. He was going there willingly to pay for the debt of sinners. He was going, friends, so that people like you and I, sinners, would not have to face God and have nothing to show for have nothing to say besides I'm guilty he went to that cross to bear your guilt and I tell you today this work that was done is for you because you are a sinner I don't need to know you I don't need to know your name I don't need to know your past 
You don't need to know me to know that I'm a sinner. We all know that about each other, that we're flawed, that we're selfish people, that we look out for our own account always. We've broken every single one of God's commands, whether it was in our hearts or with our hands. And we need saving, my friends, and that is what Christ came to do. I'm sorry if this sounded jumbled. I'm not the best speaker, but this I tell you today, that there has been a remedy given for sick sinners like us. There has been a work done for sinners which wipes the slate clean, which is Christ's death on the cross. His crucifixion, his life, death, and resurrection. He has opened up the door so that sinners may come to God and say, Father, have mercy on me. I know I have sinned, and I know I should die, but I know this, that you sent your son to die on my account. Be merciful to me, O oh God, a sinner. And my friends, he welcomed me love you and bring you into his fold. His next song is called Dead Man. Thank you for listening. Wow. Amen.